fixing these eyelashes guys who they're making my eyes cry trying to look cute this night hello 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 not been on life here for so long guys bear with me hello hello oh looking all cute masala this night hello guys hi i'm just looking at myself guys i should be looking at you guys from here <laughs> hi today i want to come here guys all this time i'm just on tiktok tiktok hi Finally trying to, to give TikTok a little break and come here, you know. Pray for me that it's going to work. Hello. I'm not very good at giving TikTok a little break, guys. But we'll see. How are you all doing? I'm going to play this, my old, nice old music from my country. So how are you guys doing? I'm going to be doing once in a while this nice, cute live videos. Thank you, whoever liked the video. <laughs> As you can see, I try to look cute, you know. I did a little bit of eyelash and a little bit of makeup here. Only God knows what I did. <laughs> but I've not done anything here, you know. Just leaving it all simple and natural. How are you guys doing? Today we're going to be chatting about understanding African culture. So yeah, welcome to this live video. I don't know if you're from Africa yourself or you just want to listen, but this video is mainly for people who are from Africa and want to know how to like find peace inside the community because the community sometimes is hard to find peace because the rules and regulations and the way of thinking and the way of behaving that the community is programmed to behave is very hard for someone to have peace sometime as an african i guess depending on the part of africa you're from i'm talking for people for, who are from gambia and senegal because we are very similar in culture it's almost like one country that is two country which is gambia and senegal but other africans i cannot talk for them but mainly the same problem will be for all of africa for the for the most part so yeah we are going to be talking about how to have peace you know with the african community hello sis oh my god i miss you Thank you. You like the bread. Thank you so much. Hello, Maudlamin. Sis, I miss you. Oh my God. I want to come into your live video, sis. Do you still do them? I have like a cold. So I'm drinking hibiscus, warm hibiscus. Mm, so good. Warm hibiscus with some bay leaf and some clove and some ginger boil it all together oh nice miss you sis oh miss you all thank you i have like a little bit of cold that i wake up with this morning but not that serious my body is so i'm going to gym now sis hey! sis your sister is losing weight look Ding, 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 ding. Let me dance for you, sis. My favorite song. Sis, this is me losing weight. Look at me, sis. Just look at me, sis. Just take a look at me. Wait, let me look for my favorite song. Not this one. Wait. Yes, this one is my favorite. You. I like 
anymore because with this with this dance you're dancing with your tiptoe you don't stand you do like this your foot is like only the tip of your foot and you can't see it but it's so hard <laughs> you love it it's so nice <laughs> I drink this mm -hmm. and I have my hibiscus here that's why my skin is tall tan the lightning is not very good but I like this one. <laughs> Thank you. I thought that person wrote something, but the word they wrote is fine. I think it's T A T A. T A T A is the woman private part in Wolof. And a lot of the Senegalese people, they wrote that when I'm on live TikTok sometimes. Just the random idiots keep writing. Da da da, it's nice. T-A-T-A, -T -A, it's nice. I like T-A-T-A. -T -A. Or they'll be like, yo, T-A-T-A. -T -A. No, not T-A-T-A. -T -A. It's D-A. It's D-A-T-A. D A just like this D A that this person wrote, but D A T A, not D A D A. D A T A. That is, I don't want to mention the name. <laughs> that is the woman private part. <laughs> the da and the ta, you put it together. Oh, so evil. And the Senegalese guys, when they smoke their weed until their head is high, they're just going on TikTok writing every woman, you know, da da da, you know, and just going crazy. <laughs> Not every woman, but like when they see the woman dancing, like someone like me, especially when you look a little sexy, they're like, I like da da da, or they're like, yo da da da. I'm like, ugh, oh, I know my da 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 is here. Why are you calling my da da da? It doesn't want you. They think that's gonna annoy me. It does annoy some people, but not that. All right, da da is what? It's sister. Oh, that's nice. Hello. <laughs> you are crazy yes the light is fine awesome so what happened is i want us to talk about african culture and old men and everything ah stuff <laughs> oh that's nice in sohali oh 
Sohali or something. I can't say the word. I, I don't know how to speak that language. That's awesome. I'm going to talk about African, you know, community, especially my community, the Gambia and Senegal. And I'm going to talk about old people, you know, that, that like young people and how the community normalize that, you know. And that's why a lot of the young people, they're doing this sukkah daddy thing now. And then the community don't like it. You know, they like, why are you doing sukkah daddy? Some of the people don't care, you know, they don't care their children do sukkah daddy as long as they give them money from it. To be honest, it's sad. But some people don't like it. They try to tell their children to leave the old people alone. When it's too late and everything. <laughs> when the children come from a community that like old, old people or allow the old people to have access to the young people, you cannot just randomly tell the young people to leave the old people alone. They're gonna tell you to fuck off. Look at the mint. I put fresh mint in my hibiscus. I forgot to bring a glass for this one. Oh well, when I'm gonna drink it, I'll use the same cup. I'll kinda like rinse it and put it in that cup. So because the community, you know, allow the young people to like, allow the old people to like marry the young people or just have access to them, you know. But it's mainly by marrying them. Then when the old people are like, when the young people are a little grown, they're going to go, you know, like to do stuff with the old people because they, they will know that, you know, this community, you know, they normalize this. They don't see it as anything wrong. But it's very wrong. People should leave the old people a hell alone. The old people, they cannot do you anything, especially old men. They are men who cannot walk. They cannot do anything for you. Why they want you and giving you stuff? It's not like they love you and you're beautiful. No. You're beautiful, yes. But it's not like they love you. They're using you. It's like a hungry lion that is hunting meat and just lying down quietly and not moving, you know. And you're thinking, you know, this, this lion is nice and friendly or something or is sleeping. It's not. So the young, the old people, they want you because they know that they're going to need your blood, you know, and your fresh something to help them so they can stay in, uh, alive for long and so they can be healthy. Scientifically proven now for years that when the older person go with a younger person, the older person is having the, is drinking the young blood like a witch. Especially when they don't use protection. And the old people, they cannot use protection because their thing cannot even stand. So it cannot go in the protection, you know. It's just like they try to put it in the protection and it's like cannot walk, too old. I have no respect for old people, you know, who like young people. So I just talk to them anyhow. They don't deserve no respect. Their thing cannot work. That's the reality, like a old carrot. They try to put it on the thing, it, on the condom. It doesn't work. So you don't need that, you know, to touch you. Look, leave them alone. And as a woman, when you're used to, you know, having sukkah daddy or just having something to do with old people, I wish I knew this long time ago. If I knew it, I was never going to come here or maybe not the way I came here. That's the reality. I knew it all along that it's not good, but I didn't know it like I know it now, you know. I was trying to normalize it, like the culture I came from, you know. I have to learn how bad this is and agree that it's bad. Because the African culture, they normalize so many things that is wrong. And then they're so busy saying no to basic things, you know, saying no to the crumbs, you know, like something that is not harmful even. They can fight all day for that to not happen. But things that, you know, that is very harmful, they normalize it. Because the community have a lot of people. <laughs> you know, I'll never stop talking about these things. <laughs> so I went to Gambia three years ago and put a roof over a bar. Had 
absolutely no idea Gambia was a sex tourism resort. I was 48 then, was pursued by a beautiful Gambian woman, 31. We married now. I told you, you have a wife 31 years old. That's nothing. That's even an old wife. That's an old wife in Africa. You can get 20 year olds. 18, 16, 17, 15 even. Because Africa have no respect for their children. Africa don't care about the children. Africa allow the old people from there to marry the young people like they did to me when I was a baby. And I'm still doing it. <clears throat> Africa <laughs> is sad. I shouldn't be laughing. It's very sad. Not like I'm laughing because it's funny. I just laugh sometimes when I'm supposed to cry, you know. Not all the time when I laugh, I'm supposed to cry. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? This African thing. <laughs> Sis. <laughs> it's very bad. Not funny that Africa, they, they don't care. That's why. And that young woman, you have to be very careful. Because sometimes if the person not healed, and getting knowledge, which you can really get that knowledge under the mango tree, by the way. You have to get out of the mango tree like I did in order to know yourself what and to even know what love really is. If you research and read about it, just getting out of um, the mango tree is not going to make you get in knowledge. Some people get out of the mango tree and they're still living under the mango tree because they don't recite, they don't read, they don't want to change because change is not easy. And this community don't like change. They complain about what they don't like. But when you tell them this is how to change it, they're like, this person is crazy. Like, I'm a joke. They're talking like a white woman or Western woman mind. This is who we are. You cannot change it. So then why are you talking? That person, you have to be very careful, whoever, whoever that person is. Because depend who you are, you, you are 48, depend who you are and how you look and who you are and how much... This person love you. Africans are very good. Us. We have, not me now. My hands is up. I'm not like that anymore. That's why I'm talking. Guys, trust me. If I choose anyone I love right now, I'm going to love them. I don't love for money or opportunity or anything like this. Not like the old Ami Job. I, I love someone for opportunity to get my ass here. I told you guys that you know me. No need to hide. If I was like that, I would, I would not be talking about it. I'm not like that now. I know myself what long time ago. If I don't know myself what, you will not see me in the videos. I will do like women who don't know their self what, hiding and crying, you know, with my trauma and drinking and doing, you know, sleeping with men or whatever, sukkah daddy or whatever. I know my word and I know how hard it is for me to learn to know my word by myself without even people uh, seeing people from my community talking about it. They never talk about it like I'm doing. They just talk about nonsense stuff, you know, and never teach the young people how to gain self-confidence and know their self-worth. If you are not careful, that wife, I don't know your relationship with that wife, but if you are not careful, it doesn't work. And that's not because you're from America or wherever you're from. I don't know where you're from. Even for us, it happens to us. When you come from abroad, everybody wants to marry you. Almost everybody. And if you are under the mango tree like them, they're going to be like, especially when you have nothing like them, or you're just tiny bit better than them, depend who they are. But most of the time, that woman, for example, she already have a lot of people that want to marry her before, for example, and they're under the mango tree, and she said no. Why? And now she see you, from wherever you're from, and that's it. She, she just, you know, like went on you or something, or agree, like the old Ami Job. And us, we are very good at, you know, like faking love. Us African, hey, God. The way we are trained to hide our emotion, the way we are trained to fake, the way we are trained to fake it till you make it, it's painful, man. When the African person don't love you, it's hard to know it. I'm telling you this. Even they do that to us Africans like them.
they can kiss you, sex you, tell you about their day, call you my love, introduce you to all their family, introduce you to all the mango trees, dancing on the street with you. It doesn't mean nothing. Absolutely fuck off. Have a child for you still don't mean nothing. Do everything, cry with you, talk to you, help you, support you. It doesn't mean nothing. <laughs> it's very sad. <laughs> you have to be very careful. I don't know, you know, you and your wife. I don't know. I don't mean to scare you, but this is the reality. So what happened is just avoid young people if you want to be safe. Try to go for people who are around your age. You're still not 100% safe with, with the African community, but just try to go with people who are around your age at least. Don't go for someone that 10 years younger, you know, and more. If you are going for someone younger, it shouldn't be for more than five years and stuff, at least. Older women there, do they date younger men as well? Yes, older men, older women here, some, some older women here like younger men. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if they're black or Scottish older men, sorry, women. But I think a lot of the older women here, they would rather go to Thailand or Africa or something, you know, because it's easier there to have access to younger men. The Gambian community also have older women that like young, younger Gambian guys, you know, and stuff, but it's not many. It's the men that love young women. Gambian men love Gambia and Senegal men love love young people it's in their blood like 8 out of 10 will marry a young wife even if they have a wife they have to marry a second wife that is like younger than their daughter their first daughter and if the wife don't like it she can get to hell they're gonna do it Eight out of ten Gambia and Senegal men. You know, a lot of these men that will marry young people, I always wonder if they are pedophile. Men that love young people, you never know if they are these men that, you know, touch young children. Because they, they love young people, yeah. You can't trust them. So because the community is full of young people that marry people and they don't love them, <clears throat> those, those men that I told you that love young people and they marry them and they're under the mango tree with them and some are here abroad, but they have a young wife in Africa and they have a wife here as well. Do you think all of those women love them? They don't love them. All of those young people don't love them. They're not crazy. They have feelings. They're just faking it. Just because this man have a house or this man can send them 100 pounds every month or something. Don't you know that? If they can do that with a Gambian like them, how you think they're not going to do that with you? Because you're most likely going to give them a visa or something because you're most likely going to trust them even more than the Gambian person because you don't know their, their way of life, you know. You think they're innocent when they're smiling, you know, and playing nice, you know. So when they die, my baby, you know, and sexing you. You're like, ah, oh, I have a young wife who love me. Huh. You don't know that it doesn't mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't mean nothing. Absolutely nothing at all. The sex, everything means nothing. Everything means nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's like drinking water to them. <laughs> Sis, <laughs> I'm telling you, I am living... I am Af American living in Kenya now. I would love to come there and date older women. They are where? <laughs> Scotland or Gambia? Oh my God. They are where? Why do you like older women? Ami, my sweetheart, how are you? Hello, Cherno. Is it not Cherno? Is it? Chiarnon. So, can't pronounce your name. I want a 16 year old. I feel weird that my wife is 17 younger than me. 
You want a 16 year old. You idiot. Whoever the hell you are. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> My reading is not good. You mean you don't want? I don't want a 16 year old. Okay, I get you. <laughs> sorry. I feel weird. My wife is 17 years younger than me. That's fine. As long as she's not underage. A lot of us African women are very good at having older uh, person as a husband. See why I love you. Like I said, look at yourself in the mirror. See if you look okay with your age and her. Just see if you match her a little bit. If you look totally different from her, you just too ugly for her and stuff. Let's just be real. I don't know how you look or how she look. Come on. If she look like a top model and you look like some hopeless amigo person there, just tell yourself the truth. She doesn't love you. Think if you were her, if you would love the person. It's very easy. Just think. Look at yourself. Look at her. Think if you were her, it's possible for you to love her or not. Simple. If you know that if you are if you are her, you will never want to love you. Then just know she doesn't love you. She's, she's like you. She's human. She's just poor and from Africa. And that's the difference. How you think people from Africa don't have blood? We have blood. We just play games. So I went to Gambia three years ago. Yeah, I read that. <clears throat> people from Africa have blood. They just play game. I am 56 years old. That's why I like older women. All right. But do you not want someone around your age? <laughs> why do you want old, old, old women? Like, you'll be able to have someone like my age or a little older. I'm 41. Like I said, just depend how you look. Some men look, are 50, but they look like 40. Some men, they're 40, they look 60. Some women, the same. Just try to look healthy. Try to get fit, you know, if you want younger person or someone around your age at least. Don't just be like... And eating boga and sitting there or something and then you just pardon me you're gonna look too old and looking like hopeless amigo here and then you expect young beyonce looking girl you think that girl just because he's poor she doesn't have feelings i why what a joke we have feelings we just want opportunities so we play dumb we know that you guys are going for us because we we have nice body so we're just gonna also you're using us and we're using you so we just play along like we are mad. You think we are mad? We're not mad. You are in good shape. <laughs> you walk out every day. <laughs> That's nice. So where do you want to go to find a young person? To find an older person? Scotland or, um, or Africa? Because you keep saying, I want to come there. I'm in Scotland. I'm not in Africa. I wish I was under the mango tree right now. But my children, they are at high school now. So I cannot move, you know. My daughter is doing net five exam, the highest exam here. The highest ever high school exam. That's what my daughter is doing this year. She already start. I can't move under the mango tree. Ooh, that sound nice. Fit 50 year old. <laughs> Fit 61, um, 61. <laughs> Fit 60. <laughs> can't talk. Fit. 56 year old. <laughs> I keep looking at the text and can't say the age. That's awesome. Go to the Gambia. <laughs> Who, me? I want to go this year, yes. But I don't know because I'm going to be busy with work from next month. There's this new new work that I'm starting next month. So I don't know how busy it's going to be, but I would love to go to Gambia this year. Mm -hmm. I would love that. <laughs> wow me too so that is the game that's the game so what's gonna happen i'm not saying all this for you guys to be scared of marrying someone from africa i just want even us africans to know that if we are gonna marry someone from africa we have to choose the right person and we always have to look at ourselves and look at the person come on no one is crazy here you know if the person is your match a little bit if the person is too young and too beautiful for you, or too young and too handsome, come on, how are they going to love you? Who the hell are you? They're just faking it. The same thing you are thinking, you are doubting the love because you know they don't love you. That's why you're doubting it. You know they're not your match. They're too young for you and too beautiful for you. Come on. So don't go for it.
just leave it and go with someone that is around your match. Simple, very easy and simple. But people playing dumb, always going for people who are too beautiful and young or too beautiful and handsome. And they're like, oh, I don't know why they betray me. Now, some people, even if they they like your match, so-called match, whatever the so-called match is, they, they can still be idiotic, you know, and just lying and just treating you bad. That's the reality. Because a lot of us Africans, the way we've been trained to love, we have to relearn what love is. Us, the women and the men, we have to relearn what love is. I have lived in Rwanda, Tanzania and Kenya, and I have seen it all. You see, that's good. Then at least you have a little bit of knowledge. Ooh, my second favorite song. Hello. Hey. I love this song too. You can have a beautiful love in Africa or with a black person from Africa. You just have to know how to go for it. Don't just jump first come first serve or jumping with people who look totally different from you and going crazy. <laughs> the people who look totally different from you and they're just smiling and looking so nice and innocent. They're not crazy. They're not, they know what they want. And you know it, you know? So... So yeah, you guys can ask me any question about anything that you want to know. I just wanted to talk about why we should leave these old people alone. Not just even people under the mango tree, even people here, we have to leave old people alone. We are changing the world now, making all the young people to think that they have to run for old people. This suka daddy thing. They're not sugar daddy. They are poisonous. Sugar daddy or sugar daddy, I don't know. They're not sugar daddy. They are poisonous. Very old blood. You know, just old snake. Leave them alone. Very not good. Hello. Bala man salam. So you can have a wife that love you and a husband that love you and they're African, but you have to know how to play your card. You have to know how to play your card. You can contact me. My email address is above. If you have any African relationship with an African and you're not so of the game they're playing, contact me. You don't have to tell me their name. You don't have to even tell me your name if you want. You don't have to tell me what country they are in. Just tell me the situation and I will tell you if it's good or not. I will tell you if they're lying to you or not. I'm telling you, we have to stop this. Using people and using our body to get what we want. We are going to change the, you know, the young people's life. We are going to teach them to do that. Instead of being doctors and humans, you know. We are going to teach them to use their body to get what they want. That's very bad, you know. We have to talk about it. It's not easy to talk about, but it's not fair for the person doing it and for the person you're doing it to. What dress? You love my dress. <laughs> you know, I used to want a black, black American husband when I was younger. Before I came here, when I used to watch Eddie Murphy, I used to say that I want a black, black American husband, you know. Not to go to America even or anything then, but I was just thinking that Eddie Murphy was so romantic, the way he went and looked for a wife himself and the way he makes sure he get the woman he wants and stuff like that. This coming to America thingy. I was like, oh, I wonder, you know, like, because I like real love thing. Even though I was young and I was going through under underage marriages, I know that was wrong. I know that I deserve someone that we love each other like Eddie Murphy and Leisha that, that time in that movie. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think some black American men can be um, romantic and nice and kind, but it's like African men, yeah. Some of them are insane as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And what change? <laughs> it's not like nothing changed. It's just I end up, you know, not going to America or having an American husband. And that's that's it. <laughs> it's not that I wanted to go to America then or anything, like I said, but I think I just wanted to have a man like that, you know, that kind of love, like I said. Because I believe in love. I still believe in love. You don't want that anymore. <laughs> it's not like that. I would love that. I would love to have a nice, caring man, a black man especially. Doesn't matter, you know, American or not. There are some people that are trying to marry me, but... I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to marry them or not, to be honest, because they're from Gambia, these two that want to marry me. And there's another person that want to marry me who's from Senegal as well. Over the years, a lot of people try to marry me because I do video, you know, and I don't have a husband. They love my personality and everything. Even though I'm always, I'm always screaming at our men, telling them to stop abusing women and stop lying and cheating and stop being an idiot. They still just want to marry me all the time. I don't know why, but... It's just, I don't know. I think over the years, I learned to, 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 to know the type of man I want, you know? Because I learned to not go for money or look. Of course, I want someone that we have like feeling on each other, but I want someone that have emotional support and understanding because of what I've been through. And not that our men don't have that at all. And they don't like it when I say that, but they don't have it at all. And they don't even want to have it. Like you try to teach them emotional support. They're like, you're a white woman. You're talking like a white woman. Huh? You're not going to your tubab. You think you're tubab, but me, I'm not tubab. Those tubab thing, those white people think. They call it white people think. Being a human, they call it white people think. And me, I have massive trauma growing up. If I have a man who don't have emotional support, when I'm crying, he will tell me to get to hell. <laughs> or he will tell me to cry and finish crying before I can talk to him. And I might just die. I might just take my life and I'm crying, you know, feeling so hopeless and just unwanted. <laughs> that happened to me. One of the guys who wanted to marry me when I was crying, called him crying. He was like, I don't want to hear you until you finish crying. I'm like, I just have to quickly wipe my tears here and be like, what? I have two choices, either to open this window and jump or to just block this man. <laughs> and then I block him. I opened the window, but I didn't jump. I just stand there and cry and wipe my tears. This is a while ago, like a few months ago. And I blocked him, and he was like calling, calling, calling my sister to unblock him. I blocked him so many times. So a lot of the time, we don't have emotional support. This is the problem. Us Africans, even me, I have to learn emotional support over the years. I didn't have it before. Like, I have it, but not the way I should have it. Well, like, I have it especially with men or, like, when friends are going through something. But I wasn't suing it, like, with my children. Like, you know, like, when they do something wrong, I'm just, like, screaming or something. So I have to learn over the years to, to you know, like, develop emotional support. But I always have emotional support for partner or friend when they're going through something. I can always stop what I'm doing to go and help when I can or, you know, like, talk to them or, like, give, you know, support, physical support, financial support, whatever I have. I am all ears for you to tell me all your, your pains. <laughs> I have a husband already, guys. Do you guys see this lucky you, Tony? <laughs> Well, I am closer. I am already in Africa. Oh my God. That's nice. We are romantic. I am American. I am in America and trying to get to Africa. That's nice. You know why a lot of us want people from abroad, a lot of us African women and even African men? It's not always like we're just gold diggers and hopeless. Well, it can be part of it, to be honest, depending on the person you met. But it's like the way people abroad can kiss you and touch you and listen to you, you know, and make you feel wanted, you know, and just make you feel welcome and, you know, just ready to listen and ready to hook you and ready to, you know. That's everything, man. 
We don't have that from our men. But the problem is when you are like that yourself, like, and the person don't have that, that can ha that can disturb you as well. Like you that is giving that if you don't have it. I'm good at giving that when I'm with someone, but when the person don't give me that when I need it. Because I don't like being with someone and then talking to other people for when I need someone to talk to or when I need someone to comfort me. I have to go and look look for a friend or look for somebody to comfort me. I don't like that. I don't even have a friend that I'm that close to. Like, I can call them when I'm crying or something. I don't have that. So, and if I cannot cry with my own man, because he's going to tell me that, I don't want to hear you cry. Call me when you finish crying. <laughs> That's what African men do, guys. Not all of them, but... I experienced it guys. I was like, what the hell? Do you know if I'm gonna like open this window and jump, you're telling me to call you when I finish. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> it's very sad guys. <clears throat> I have this little bit of call. You have a husband. <laughs> well, maybe in the next life. <laughs> I don't have a husband right now, no. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. If I have to marry someone who is in Africa now, it's going to be complicated because my children are going to school, you know. In the middle of high school, I can't move to Africa right now, you know. That's the problem. <laughs> Thanking the person. <laughs> don't mind that person congratulating you. You're not married yet. So yeah, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about a little bit on, until you guys have some questions for me, I'm going to talk about how to have peace inside the African community. The African community is so hard to have peace in, you know, because they have problem in everything. And it's like, they just, they hate people that having peace. African community hate people that like to have peace, you know. People who just mind their business and just keep quiet or just keep their things to themselves and stuff. They're like, this person is this, this person is that. They just don't like to see people that are having peace. Not all, but for the most people, for the most part. <clears throat> so you have to know how to just look at them and be like, okay, whatever, you know, and just leave them <laughs> and just laugh like I do, you know. What you gonna do? Because if not, they're gonna drive you crazy, you know. So what you're gonna do is this 2020, if you want to have peace inside the African community, know that, sorry about my insane English, inside the African community. Yes, that's a good English, by the way. To have peace, in African community. So what you're gonna do is, what you're gonna do, you have to look at the things that you have to change, you know, if it's the way you dress or the way you talk or the way you spend your money, or the way you say yes to everything because you're not allowed to say no the african community can can train you to not say no from a young age because when you say no to your parents you are dead so you're gonna continue not saying no for the rest of your life <clears throat> And when you grow up, the community can train you to be very, very, very um, comfortable, but uncomfortable, but comfortable. Like the community can train you to learn how to be comfortable when you are not comfortable with something. You have to train yourself to be comfortable with it. It's hard to explain, but it's like... I think for my country like Gambia and Senegal, I think why it's like that, why it's, it's full of fake and you know, and stuff like this. It's because the people that marry two, three wives all the time, like a lot of us come from a home that the man have a two wife. A lot of us, our, our parents have two, three wives. 
So people learn this fake life because a lot of these wives, they're just faking. They're not happy with each other, but they have to fake it. Yes. It's because a lot of the black community have, have the men that have two wives, three wives, four wives. Not about fake it till you make it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Fake it till you make it, Mr. Uganda. But I still believe in, you know, depend what you're faking till you, till you make it. If it's positive, you know. For example, you want to lose weight or something. I don't know. Not like fake it till you make it for something that is not good, you know. But the community for Gambia and Senegal and people that have like communities that marry two, three wives. Why it's like that is that because these women... They're not happy with each other, but they're faking that they're happy because they're not allowed to fight or show each other that I hate you because you married to my husband. Especially in Gambia and Senegal, a lot of them fake it. They're not allowed to show that they don't like this woman because he's married to their husband. None of them is allowed to just stand up and say, I don't like this woman just because he's married to my husband and I don't want no one to marry my husband. No one have the God to say that. Which, if that was me, that's what I would do. I always say them say it in my videos. I don't want to marry someone who is married. I don't want to have a husband who is married. I cannot be a second or third wife or first wife. I want to have a husband for me alone. And whenever I say that, they laugh at me. Some people also say that, not just me. But they always laugh at us that say it and say that we will never be married then. Or we are copying the Western world. We are crazy. Or we are not Muslim. Because it's Allah who say that. But Allah said so many other things and they don't focus on that. They focus on this one because they liked it. <laughs> That's my daughter. She was putting the remote. Yeah, go to bed, guys. Oh, it's not time. It's okay. It's not time to bed. Yeah, sorry. I thought it's time to bed and tomorrow is school. <laughs> I thought you were going to bed. That's why you're bringing the controller. So yeah, what was I'm saying? So um, because the community is full of fake, because the community is full of people that marry to second wife, third wife, even fourth wife, but mainly two wife. Well, go to got to go, but I will follow you. I truly truly enjoy your vibes and think you are amazing. Good night. Thank you. Good night. So what happened is because the community is full of fake. <laughs> there are some genuine people in the community, but it's not easy at all. It's like a diamond trying to find diamond now. So what happened is when you say they call you negative as well, <laughs> which is why it's worse. So what happened is people are faking this so-called happiness and so-called not negative vibes, you know, that people are doing now. So-called positive vibe. <laughs> It's not like when people talk about reality, they're negative, or when they sow their emotion, they're negative, you know. <laughs> it's part of being a human. It's just because all of you, a lot of you are faking it. That's why you're always, eh, eh. and me, when I'm not feeling, eh, I'm like, ah, why, you know, I'm just so how I feel. Doesn't mean that I'm negative. I'm just real, and you're faking it. How is that making me negative? But anyway, you can call me negative or whatever. So um, so what happened is the community is the way it is because no one is talking about the reality all of these years, guys. That's why I love talking about the reality. They're not doing it. Even the skin bleaching, why is ramping? Is no one is talking about it. When you talk about it, they hate it because the majority of our women bleach their skin. So when anybody make content about skin bleaching, huh? All your friends and family members are like, what the hell? <laughs> so no one gonna make it. Because if the person that is bleaching, you're waiting for them to talk about it, they won't talk about it. And the very little amount of people who are not bleaching, they don't want to talk about it because when they talk about it, everybody run away because 80% of the women in the community are bleaching. Gambia and Senegal community is worse on TikTok, full of bleaching cream, people selling it. <sighs> Painful, man. I don't follow them back. When they're following me and I click their profile, I see the ceiling. They're like, this cream, if you use it two days, I give you one week. I'm just like unblocking their in the Kaumanaka, unfollowing their entire generation. 
I don't follow people who bleach. Never. Selling the bleaching cream. Telling our youths that their, their skin is not beautiful. You come from Gambia and Senegal. Gambia and Senegal is almost like Sudan, South Sudan. Dark and beautiful people. Why are you denying it? Anyway. So the community is rampant the way it is. All the wrong thing is happening. Marrying all the people, bleaching skin, you know, doing all this horrible stuff. Drugs, alcohol, cheating. Just all this rampant stuff because no one is talking about the reality. People don't protect the community as well. Everyone just do whatever, you know. If you know that this is going to favor you and you're going to make money from it. Or it's just something that can harm the community you, you're just not going to be cared enough to not do it in the community even if you must do it because you are idiotic you hide it and feel sorry for the community knowing that the community is full of children who are hot and broken because their parents beat them up when they're young so much so if they see you doing something bad they're going to copy you because they're broken so if you are like drinking alcohol or smoking weed or doing chaga ranchang stuff chaga ranchang is like you just Chaga is like, uh, chaga, chaga is prostitute, by the way. But when we say chaga, we don't mean prostitute that sell themselves. We mean just like, uh, we call people that like sex chaga as well. So if the Gambia or Senegal person say chaga, they mean chaga as a prostitute, but they mean also chaga as a you like sex. So people that like sex too much in the community and people that use drugs, alcohol, or marry young people or old people for money or just doing anything wrong, stealing, gossiping, horrible gossip, evil stuff, they don't hide it. They do it under the mango tree, people see it or get the youths involved. Very wicked, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I think if you're doing something horrible, you know what you're doing is wrong. No one is perfect. So-called no one is perfect. I think everyone is perfect. You just don't want to be perfect, but you're perfect, you know? But anyway. So um, if this so-called no one is perfect, you know, is there, but you can hide at least. You don't, like, introduce it to young people, you know? That's wickedness. So when you go to Africa now, a lot of the youths are on drugs or just don't know who they are and going crazy. I know that happened here too for some part of here it's even worse but yeah we don't need that in africa because africa need to be developed you know the west can do that and get away with it because they already developed but for us we have to start from scratch and if all our youth don't know their self-worth and going crazy it's not going to help us you know we need youth that are bright and focus and know who they are and focus we don't need hopeless youths who are doing the wrong thing because the adults are idiotic and teaching the youths. <clears throat> this is why I talk about stuff, but it's not like I'm rude or whatever. They call me rude and stuff, but they actually was rude than me, you know, but they just don't have the commitment and the honesty. And also they don't want to take the, the names that people will call you when you click the camera. They don't want to take all those names. So they hide behind and call me all names, but I'm not going to stop. So yeah, guys, if you guys have any questions, you can send me before I go. I don't want this video way too long. Yes, low self-esteem, Mr. Uganda. The high self-esteem. The high self-esteem, you know, is achievable now. People are talking about it, but people just don't want to learn it, you know. You know, not long ago, there was a video and the woman was talking about how her daughter was bleaching. No, sorry, her daughter was not bleaching. How her seven-year-old son, the woman is not from Gambia, but she's from somewhere in Africa and she lives in uh, America. I do it the video, you know, on my TikTok. Do it, no, I, I couldn't do it. it it wasn't i think it wasn't allowing me to do it or i couldn't do it but i use the sound and make a video of it and i tell people to click on the sound audio thingy and see the woman video so the woman was talking about how her child went to school to learn about uh martin luther king something like that martin this martin king guy can't pronounce his name so and then she said that when her son come back and her says she, she was bleaching she's not she was bleaching she's bleaching because the video is new this is like a couple of days ago. She have this dark, you know, this dark lips and orange looking face, you know, proper bleaching face. <clears throat> and she was standing in the camera, sitting, you know, 
like this and saying that my son went to school and he had a, he had a um, history lesson about Martin Luther King. Can't put Martin Luther King. God, can't say his name. And then my son come home and I had a hard conversation with him because my son was seeing that questioning like he like his his entire existence like basically she said the son said mom why are we not all one color us humans and she said why are you asking that and then she said the son said because today i learned about this person at school and i and i don't want to be black anymore and she, she was like what and the son is like yeah and then she was like why and she was like and she said the son is like because black people cannot think right cannot do things right and then she said to the son, but did I not do things right or think right? Did your father not do things right and think right? What's wrong with us? And the son said that nothing, we are fine. And then she said, then why are you doubting yourself? But the whole time the woman was talking, I was just looking at the woman like this. Because the woman herself, she bleached her entire generation, guys. Her entire generation is like a sick, to sick tomato. A malaria tomato. You know when the tomato have malaria and develop some dark spot? I don't know if the tomato have malaria. They're going to have some dark spot. I don't know. I've never seen a malaria tomato joke aside. But her lips and her face, insane bleaching face. And she was there explaining her, her child. I said to myself, you, after you finish explaining, I hope you're going to flush your bleaching cream now. Or you're still going to rub it after you finish telling the child. You're still going to go on. After you finish talking to the child, you're going to do that? Or you're going to floss the hell and buy sea butter? Sea butter is good. I used that for years. Look at my skin. Sea butter. And coconut oil, very good. And you're gonna look young. You eat some baobab drink, hibiscus. I did that video and I said that to her. This, like I'm saying now. I said to her, after you finish talking, you should throw away your bleaching skin. What the, what people tell the child outside is not gonna really harm the child. It's what you are telling, you are doing inside the house that is gonna harm the child. When you are um. Sometimes the education can be traumatized, yeah, traumatic to the children, yeah. But what the child is is experiencing in the house is worse. When the child go out and people make them feel hopeless because of their skin color, either on purpose or not, that cannot really traumatize them when they have the confidence they need in the house. But in the house, people who give birth to them are getting rid of their own skin. Honestly, guys, I never understand this and I will never understand it. When I see people who give birth to black children and then bleed their skin to get out of the black skin and leave it food with the child. Ha! This community is sick, man. How people do this and they go to sleep, they wake up like nothing is happening, joking and laughing. How did people like this sleep? I don't understand. I swear to God, especially us that choose to live abroad here, choose to have children here who are black, knowing how racist here is. You yourself that is not from here, you experience racism. You know your children are going to go to school and with the effing racist people, some of them are. And then you bleach your skin to tell the child that they, they're right, all this, what they're saying and doing is true. That's why I'm taking my skin off. Don't you see? It's true. Very true. That's why I'm taking all my skin off. They're right. They're right. Ha! People like this, I never understand them. And all these years I talk about it. And they hate it when I talk about it. Look, you don't have to hate me. You should love me, by the way. All of the videos you're watching, you should watch me and listen to me and do what I'm telling you. I'm the only one who is telling you the true video that can change your life and your children's life. These things are not healthy. They're very ugly. They can never look natural. And they prove to the whole world that you're insecure and you hate your gut. 
and your entire generation got from your grandma. Mm -hmm. And doesn't matter what you're wearing, doesn't matter what you put on, you prove to the whole world that you don't love yourself and that you're very ugly and that you hate your entire generation. That's what you're suing after you dress and put on all this stupid stuff on top of your effing bleaching rotten tomato skin. And you have beautiful black children next to you. How do you sleep at night, all of you that do this? Honestly, I can never stop asking you this question for five years now, yeah. Because it's not a joke. It's like everything else that I talk about, you know, five years now. How do you sleep at night having beautiful black children next to you in the middle of the white people? And the children go to school and the white people don't like them. They come home and you tell the child that they are right, look at me. Just go and die. Because what the white people are saying is true. That's why I'm taking off mine. Can't you see? They're right. Our skin is very ugly. Ha! You know these children that are born abroad here. When, if they believe in themselves. If they come from a bleaching mother. And they believe in themselves. They're not on drugs. They're not alcoholic. They focus. Normal, clear, clean human being. You have to salute them all one by one. Because they don't learn that from the parent. They have to learn it from the street or from an effing video. They have to learn self-confidence from effing video outside of the house. Not you. You tell them that they shouldn't exist. Because you make them born in... in, in you know why you, when you being racist, and I... You know why it's not so bad for us? Because we come from Africa. We're too used to suffering, number one. We're too used to the self-hate, number two. We also come from under the mango tree when people don't learn about human rights and self-love and self-dignity. People don't know about that. People treat people there like they're a piece of shit from when you're young. That's why when you come here, when the white people resist to you, you don't care. Even if you scream, it doesn't mean nothing. You're just screaming because you're ambiguous, but it's nothing to you and I. That's the reality. To them, it's something big because they're from here. They believe in self-dignity, self-love, whatever you call it, you know, human right, whatever you call it. They don't believe in making human beings feel like a piece of shit. Like you and I, you know, get used to and are, are immune to it. What's the English word? It's in our DNA. We're too used to it. It's like water to us. We don't care. So why you, 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 you're going to make these children to, 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 to feel bad when people are racist to them? Because you that give bad to them, you're worse racist. To yourself and them by continuing to rub your skin off looking like a hopeless idiot and the skin is gonna look so ugly and disgusting though oh my god i swear to god if i have one power in africa mm, i will use it for to end underage marriage and skin bleaching and for people to learn self-dignity and self-love those are the three things I'm going to use my power for. All of Africa to know this. If we know this, Africa will develop and change. Until we know this, we're going to stay under the mango tree crying. Cannot even have mango juice. After the mango tree have all of these beautiful mangoes, you cannot even have mango juice. You don't even know how to make mango juice. You cannot even be developed enough to make a so-called mango juice from the mango tree. You're going to order some juice from China. Effing supermarket mango juice when you have the whole mango tree and you're effing insane that you cannot even make an effing mango juice. Hopeless like Ami Job because of the way you behave. How you don't know this, that you're your own enemy, Africa? Africa, why you don't know you are your enemy? <laughs> and you're always pointing at some white people and some Chinese. Not long ago when I was doing video, <laughs> somebody <laughs> so on TikTok, somebody commented, yes, the white people, they used to come and take our diamond and stuff, gold. That's why we are still poor and now they don't want us here. I was laughing so much. I nearly pee myself. And the person was like, what, what, what are you laughing at? But when I answered them, they have to just stop commenting. I know they, they're like, what the hell? <laughs> they thought I was going to be like, yeah, you're right. The white people, they come and take our diamond. 
No our diamond that the white people take that make us poor right now. Never. I know they look so insane and it looks so insecure and ugly. And everywhere they go, the whole world consider they hate themselves. Like, how are they so comfortable with that? <laughs> I'm just going about their day like nothing happened. I swear to God, I don't get it. I don't get people who bleed their skin and people who love children. This, this type of two people, I don't get. So, um... What was I saying? Yeah, Africa. I'm gonna go soon. I don't want this video to be more than one hour or something. Africa. Stop blaming some Chinese and you know, some stuff. Long time ago, all the crazy thing was happening. All over the world. Even Scotland here. You know how Scotland joined England. They have to kill the Scottish queen cut her neck in the middle of the day, take over Scotland. And they were all white. They were all cousins, by the way. This one was a cousin to the one in England who killed her and take over the country. Long time ago, crazy thing was happening all over. Right now, the amount of diamond and gold they take from us is not why we are poor. I keep telling you guys this. For five years, I've been talking, telling you the same thing, nothing changed. Because it's the truth. I will not change it for nothing. Us, especially Gambia, us abroad here, us Gambian people abroad, the amount of money we send to Africa every year. Hmm? I'm talking about money that you send through registered companies. I'm not talking about money that you send through companies who are not registered or money that you carry yourself with your bag when you're going to Gambia. I'm not even talking about those. Or money that you, you give people to take for you when they're going, people that you trust. I'm not talking about those either. I'm talking about all together the money we sent and the goods that we sent there, you know, like you send containers of goods and stuff. The amount of stuff that we get abroad and take it back to Africa over the years is double the amount of so called gold and diamond that the white people take from us over the years, us Africans abroad over the years, America and abroad, the amount of goods and money that we send back is double that. Even me, I'm a joke. Me that I don't have money, I'm not rich or nothing. I'm not even half rich. I'm not even quarter rich. The amount of money I send every year to Gambia is, is unbelievable, not to mention everybody else. But why you are still poor is not because of money. Even if the whole of Europe now be like, okay, Africa, we took your gold before, so now we're gonna give you all of our money. You will still be under the mango tree and finish all the money. Don't you understand that? Because you don't give a F. You don't want to give a F. You don't want to hear anyone who is telling you the truth like this either. You make them enemy and run. Run and go and dance and eat and go to sleep. You focus on these three things, food, sex, dance, and, and clothes. Food, sex, clothes, you focus on. Food, sex, party. Food, sex, and party. That's what you focus. But that's not why you're poor, Africa. Not just you focus on that alone, no. You also keep traumatizing the hell out of your children. Every child you give birth to, you ruin the entire generation and jump on the next child. And you love giving birth to children. I don't know why you love it. I don't know if you're wicked or you're just confused. You love giving birth to children like they're nothing. You're just like, Let's have more. These children, they're people. How you just, I think you love giving back to them because you don't give a F about them. So it's easy anyway to just give back to them and don't give a F. And you have these children with almost anyone you come across. You don't watch people you have children with. And you make your young people to repeat that because you normalize having children with the wrong people. 
People who don't want your God. You make sure you have children with them by force. Even marry them. Or sex them. Either abuse them. Or buy them some gift. Use them. Groom them. Hey, Africa. Stop your behavior. If you want to be developed. Never mind me talking like this. You stop your behavior if you want to be developed. Or stop complaining. And definitely don't blame some Chinese and some white people. This thing you're doing is why your young people cannot even have genuine love. They don't know how to love a lot of them. They have to learn it like I do. Lo nobody wants to learn that. It's not easy to learn it. I think for me, I'm lucky in a way because the fact that I've been single all these years is good and it's bad in a way. It gives me time to learn all that I need to learn. I love it, to be honest now. <laughs> I love it now, finally. I'm more settled now, you know, like, too used to being alone now, I guess, and stuff. Just can't be bothered. Not that I don't want to be with somebody, but I'm more like not rushing to be with somebody, if you know what I mean, but. You transfer this idea of having children with the wrong people, marrying the wrong people. You give this disease to your young people. That's why all the marriages are, are finished and just not happy. Because you teach them how to not have a good love. You don't know how to love and you don't want to learn how to love. Even you that is abroad here. You bring your sick behavior from the mango tree. You bring it here in the cold. You still betray your women here. Treat them like a piece of shit. Your children watching that. How many of you are brought here? Finish with your wife and children because you want to marry somebody else in Gambia or you just want to cheat or you just want to do like you do under the mango tree and the woman don't like it. You call her a white woman, western woman and you divorce her entire generation. Or she divorce you. And then you blame her, knowing that you make her divorce you. A lot of you are coward. You cannot divorce someone. You will make sure they divorce you, but you divorce them. Indirectly. Because you stopped being a man. Long time ago. Waiting for them to tell you, I don't want this marriage. And then you went and start telling everyone, oh, this person said they don't want the marriage. Me, I'm a good husband the whole time. We have children. And from nowhere, they say they don't want the marriage. I've done nothing. They my dara. Buguta say, they don't want to be married. Hey! What is this community? Why are we pretending like we're not seeing the damage we're doing? So blackmailing and idiotic. No one can stand up and take the responsibility for what they're doing. Always lying and going crazy. Let's all stop this and behave ourselves. This is 2022 or 2100, I don't know. I'm going to go now, guys. Let's all behave ourselves. Start doing the right thing. It's easy. Everyone look at yourself in the mirror and start doing the right thing. For the youths. They're watching us. They're watching us there. This is the truth. When I think of them, I cannot stop talking about the reality. I can just come here and dance and joke if I want. But that's not going to help us. Whenever I want to do it, I can't. I'm sorry. Look at the youths. They're so beautiful and clever. All they need is for us, the adults, to behave. They're most likely going to behave if we behave. But if we are doing this idiotic stuff, everyone is doing idiotic stuff, a lot of us, Salute to the ones that are behaving. Salute to you guys. But we, we need to change it. It's even me. It's not like I'm perfect. But please, let's all change. Okay? Let's all change, guys. Us that know that we need to change, we know that we need to change. Us that is hiding and doing evil stuff or doing it physically, we know it. Or doing something that we know that this, our youth shouldn't learn this, shouldn't do this, we know it. Mm -hmm. Let's all do that and then hopefully the next generation will be better and they will start having good government, good husbands, good wife, good friend, good whatever, you know. Loyal, kind, loving people. And people that beat the hell out of their children. Stop the hell 
these children do not ruin your life. They're just young. They do not do whatever the reason is why you are stressed. They're young. Leave them alone. Don't stress them like you are. You know you're not beating them because they're not listening. You're not beating them because of whatever the F they do. You know they're young. That's why they're doing, they're doing that. And you, when you're young, you never listen either. No young child is, is going to listen like a, some witch who have all the knowledge and listening. In like, even you, as an adult, you don't listen. you all the time doing the wrong thing. You are lying. Don't do what you should do. So why you expect the child to be more perfect than you? Why you don't care about the child being a child is because you're too stressed. Because the way the community treat you. I told you guys this community is programming us to not have peace. And we are continuing to program our children to not have peace. That's why we have to learn how to stop this nightmare. It's not going to get us anywhere. So, if you have a child that you're beating the hell out of them, stop it. This child might report you or someone will hear it report you and you'll be going to prison or they're going to take the child from you. This child might grow up and be depressed, most likely. Especially a child from abroad here and they've been beaten. Even us from Africa that we've been beaten, we have stress from it. Not to mention people from abroad here, they easily get stressed because they know right and wrong. They're not like us that everything, not, every horrible, horrible stuff is normalized from where we're from because people are not real. They fake and manipulative and just love to do evil stuff and smiling like nothing is happening. But the children here, they know right and wrong. They know democratic from primary one. They teach them that in the school. So your evilness that you are normalizing just because you're African, they know it's, it's called evilness and it's called um, child abuse. It's not called I'm African. You're giving it that name. You're turning it and giving it that, that nice name. No. It's called child abuse. That's the name for it. And that's what you're doing. The child don't deserve that. The child have to face racism every day. Almost. If they tell you or not. Some racism they cannot tell you. They can see how the children behaving in the school. Or how the teacher is behaving. Or how somebody's behaving. They will know this person is racist. But they don't have enough evidence. Or they cannot just be telling you every day. This person look at me like this today. This person did this mom. They're just going to be immune to it. They son. it's sad. Even you at work. I know that. I work with the white people here so many times. You go to work sometimes. You can tell that this person is doing this. Or this group, group of people are doing this. Because they don't like me. Are you going to call someone and complain? You go to work every day and manage. The same as the ones that go to school. Because they go to children who are more rude. They go to work. People are racist to them. They come home. You're, you're bleaching your skin sometimes for the most part. Most African mothers, especially the one from Gambia, Senegal, or even some Nigeria, or all these other countries that bleach their skin. West Africans are worse for skin bleaching. So the more the child will come home, you're bleaching your skin. You're not giving them any confidence that their black skin is okay, even though people are racist. And then you beat the hell out of them on top of that. Every single minute you're beating them and screaming. Pam, pam, hey! What is it? Just calm down and leave the child alone, man. Your husband is cheating. That's not the child's fault. Your husband refused to be a good man. That's not the child's fault. You've been beaten when you are young. That's not the child's fault. You've been through sexual abuse. That's not the child's fault. You miss Africa. You miss under the mango tree and some food. That's not the child's fault. You go to work. It's, people are racist or it's cold. That's not the child's fault. You send every penny you have to Africa. That's not the child's fault. Just you're trying to build a house in Africa that you cannot afford so people will think you are rich. That's not the child's fault. Just all of your problems is not the child's fault. You hate yourself. That's not the child's fault. Just all of your problems is not the child's fault. Why you don't know that? It's not the child's fault. None of it is, not, is the child's fault. So, when the child do something, no matter how painful it is, don't hit them. And especially when you're hitting them, serious African hitting. Like you're hitting your enemy. Like slave masters hit their, you know, people that time. That's evil, man. This child is not your enemy. They're your child. They're not your enemy. They're just your child, you know. Stop focusing on every little thing they're doing, beating them, screaming, monitoring them because you're too depressed as F. That's why you're monitoring the child every minute. I told you not to do this. I told you I need to do it again. I told you, hey, you're like, what? Hey. 
calm down. Leave the child alone. This child karma is gonna haunt you. They're young. And God is gonna fight for them. Most of you cannot have peace because the, the way you beat children. The karma is haunting you. You don't know that? I know it's not easy to be a mother in this community because a lot of the men don't give a F about us. That's the reality. When they marry us two days later, they don't want us anymore. We're old. Especially when you have children, they're like, Margenga, you're old now. So they go in cheating. And then telling you, I want to marry somebody else and I am a Muslim man. I'm allowed to marry somebody else. And if I don't date them, how am I going to marry them? That's their excuse, guys. This community is fucked up, man. How do you expect me to not talk about these things? Just today, I was watching a TikTok live and the person saying that, you know, the men, two men there from Senegal, saying that why they're cheating and the women don't, don't like it is because the women don't want to be married. Because for them, they're allowed to cheat because they're Muslim men. They're going to have two or three wives or even four. And in order to have those wives, they have to date them and get to know them. Do you hear this, guys? Do you hear this? So they always use the excuse, I'm allowed to marry somebody else, so I'm going to date them. This is sad, man. This is why a lot of people are scared to marry in this community now. This is scary, man. The community normalizes betraying people. And don't keep your word when you promise someone to love and be there for them. You can always change your mind and betray them. I am a white to bab. <laughs> with my home in Gambia. My wife is Gambian. How do I be a employer in the Gambia giving work and money to Gambians without being accused of being racist? Oh, don't mind people when they accuse you of racist. You just do the right thing and leave them. Some people are racist themselves and they call everything racist. Don't, don't worry about that. I'm not like that. I'm talking about people who are actually racist and stuff, but I know some people just call everyone racist for no reason because they're just idiotic and insane and just miserable. So, and if they don't want to do the work or the, they don't want to do things right and you try to correct them, they can turn it against you and call it racist, but they can get to hell. You just do what you have to do and that's it. Let them say whatever the F they want. The whole world is like that. Everywhere you go, there's racism. Some Gambians don't like all the black people that are there, like from Senegal or Nigeria and stuff. They're like, this country have a lot of foreigners. Jack Dikabi the face de la foyena Senegalese, Nigerian. Ah, Dikabi you bangi face a Igan man. Look at all these foreign people, man. So don't worry about it. He won't be sad like that, you know. Doesn't matter where you go, <laughs> Mister Uganda. Doesn't matter where you go. You just you know be you and be honest and kind. Me, I'm not like no white person should go to Gambia. <laughs> Some people say that, especially the Black Americans, they say. They say that because, you know, they don't know, you know, and because they're going back to Africa or they want to go. For us who put our ass here in the snow, I'm here in Scotland hiding in the cold here. <laughs> Cleaning toilet like the back, the, like the back family was telling me. Cleaning toilet here. <laughs> so how am I going to tell people to, <laughs> to not go to Africa? Oh my God. It's not that's why. I, I just, I'm not racist. I think everyone have a nice and evil people in every community. And I don't hold people accountable for what their grandmothers do or whatever. Then I will not be talking to my, um, sorry, their grandparents. Then I will not be talking to my mom now. Because my grandma was, was married young, my grandmother. And then she married my mother young. And then my mother married me young. So I, I should not talk to my mom. I should abandon my entire generation then because this is my whole family that doing this underage marriage thing, you know? Did I like it? No. Is it wrong? Yes. Child abuse, horrible, pedophiles so don't exist at all, this underage marriage. But I still love my mom because I know that she didn't know, you know, and it's in the past, you know? So yeah, you can go to Gambia and do work and stuff, employ people. Half a Gambian wife. Just half a Gambian wife that love you. Well, you can marry a young, beautiful Gambian woman. If she doesn't love you, she can still manage with you. Some can manage with you until you're old and dead and they never genuinely love you. Doesn't matter if you're white or blue. And they're just going to manage for the rest of their life because the way the community is, you know. We are very good at faking things sometimes. Thank you. I invest all my money into Gambia. I have nine... 
full time staffs and some cleaners and night watchmen, watchmen and security they are part of me that's nice one of my niece is looking for a job by the way if you need somebody where do you work is it a guest house or what hey, that my niece is beautiful i don't want her to work in a guest house she's hopeless and beautiful she's like me when i was young very da very dangerous when you're hopeless and beautiful i try to teach them like self-confident and to believe in themselves and stuff to not surrender to life and men but i don't know if she have to work in a guest house or hotel but she can still work there and just know how what yeah i work in a hotel before you know at the beach kunta kinte beach there that's where i was breeding here that's what the, that's where the old scottish guy that married me brought me here you know met me but what i was lucky because what saved me was that before i start the job the person that helped me start the job there told me that if any white person want you you have to tell them to marry you and take you abroad and tell them to not have sex with you until they marry you because some of them come here for sex so i use that technique and if any of them want me i'll just lie and say that if you have sex with me and we're not married we're all gonna die because of my religion my culture they, i have some juju that if we have sex we're all gonna die so you have to only wait till we get married <laughs> i used to say that and then the man just believed me and married me i don't think that's why he married me anyway he was just like looking for a wife he was confused he was like 60 and i was 25 i was so lost huh? i can't believe i married that man gunju okay i think that's not fine because we are in tanje if she can walk out how to dm me i will see if i can give her place nice nice a nice job okay she's working right now at a shop but she was complaining that they pay her i don't know what small money uh she live in tanje i don't know how she can dm you though that's the problem how am i gonna dm you I don't have your DM thingy, whatever DM thingy is. You have to thingy me. My email address is above, amiolof at gmail.com. I think it's the amijob1980 at gmail.com. It's on my about. When you look at my about, my email address is there, and you email me, I will then pass you her Gambian number. It's easier that way. But yeah, she's beautiful. She's lightning her skin herself. I told her to stop this nightmare lightning skin. She will stop it and then she will do it again. She, she have this nice, skinny, beautiful, you know, Beyonce looking body. So it's not like some of my family, they don't do this nightmare skin bleaching. They try to do skin lightening, they call it or whatever, which is a form of bleaching, but not too, too, too white. But still, ugh, I hate it. I told them to get to hell where they're so ugly and insane. But sometimes they just laugh about it and continue to do it. It's very sad. Hello, my sister. Keep the good work. Much love from America. Oh, thank you. Love you guys too. Yes, look at it. My email is there. I will work it out. <laughs> awesome. You are nice then. When she walk there, you have to look after her. Don't allow any nonsense to happen to her or anything. She mustn't be too beautiful. My Gambian wife will fire her. <laughs> She's beautiful. She's my niece. Her mom is my older sister. The same mom and dad with me. She's beautiful. Jato. Let me see. I think I still have her on, on, on my WhatsApp. Her picture is here. Let me see. But, um, yeah, she can walk there. But you just have to, um, Yes, it's here. Oh, she changed it. Oh, yeah, it's here. It's not a great picture because you cannot really see her, but it's here. That's her. But it's not a full picture. And she have this hijab thingy on. She doesn't wear hijab. I don't know why she wear this on this picture. She's beautiful. Nice, slim body. Beyonce looking body, you know. I mean, I free on Sunday to do my hair. <gasps> Or oh, tell me what day suits you. Thank you. Sunday. Yes, I can do Monica's hair. <gasps> My American customer. I love doing her hair.
I love doing Monica's hair. I don't know where this is coming. Oh, she want me to go. This person want me to do her hair next Tuesday. Next Thursday. No, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I'm working. Not doing hair next Wednesday. What the hell? And this person don't like to pay me. This particular person that want me to do her hair next Wednesday, she doesn't like to pay me at all. She always pay me effing 70 pounds when I'm standing all day, effing 70 pounds. Something that the, the, the Monica will pay me for 100 pounds. That's what she will want to pay me 70 or 75. And she will be like, Amy, this is too much. You know, in Africa, but I love her. She's like my sister. I argue with her sometimes. She's like me. We argue and then we cuddle and continue doing the hair. <laughs> I know her since when I was new here, 15 years now, guys. Because I know her just like one month of me arriving in this country until now. <laughs> the one that, you know, that I told you that doesn't pay. Gambian women have beautiful skin. They do, but they just bleach. They love bleaching and the Senegalese women and even some Nigerian women and stuff, just West African women hate their skin. Yeah, my Gambian wife aren't gonna be happy. You, you know why the Gambian women are like this? Very insecure as well. And even Senegalese women or just African women in general. This is sad, man. It's because the men, they love cheating. It's in their DNA. 90% of the men. Every single day, you know why I'm, uh, you know how, how you know seeing me often here? Because I'm all, always on TikTok. I do my live videos there. But I'm taking a break from there the last two days, like yesterday and today. I'll be coming here doing nice evening live videos for us every Thursday, inshallah, chatting. On TikTok, you will see the Gambian and Senegalese men, especially Senegalese men. Hmm? This community is sick. And you see the women. A lot of the women, they are the reason why the community cannot change. They normalize all the rubbish. They surrender to the rubbish. They believe they cannot have anything better than this. This is not going to change, so they surrender. They will tell you like this in the video. They will come into the live video, join the live video with their face like this, looking at you. They'll tell you, you cannot have a man who don't cheat. Cheating is not a problem for any married woman. A married woman who don't want a man who cheats should not be married. They'll tell you this happily. And they're married. They tell you, that's not your business if your husband is cheating or not. He's allowed to have up to four wives. They say that to me. And other women, because there are few, very few amount of women who don't like this behavior. They know this is not fair. They know we deserve better. They know this kind of love is not healthy. And people that are taking this nonsense, they don't like it. They're going to hide and look for a juju to juju their husband to stop. And the juju cannot make you stop. That's why I, I use my mouth for my juju. I will tell you, I don't want this and that. And if you're not going to listen, I'm stopping. Because if you tell me you don't want this and that, I'm going to listen to you. So why are you not going to listen to me just because I'm a woman, I'm not human? The community mastered to put the woman down and step on them. They mastered it. Especially Gambia and Senegal. I don't know any other African community. But in Gambia and Senegal, they mastered the woman. Especially Senegal is worse. They call it Jonge, Munose. Munase and Jonge is that the person know how to be a wife. The person is, is nice and, you know, know how to make a, a, a man happy or just know what they want and what they should do. And they know how to be a wife when they're going to leave the man to do whatever he want. They call it Jonge and Munase and Munamun. Munamun is you know how to bear the pain. So because a lot of our men are in a community where they normalize the cheating, and the idiotic behavior and call it because the person is a man, you, you're controlling them. They call it control. When you're telling the man to be a normal human being, they call that control. How is that controlling? 
They said a man have to control his wife, not you controlling him. This community is sick, man. That's why a lot of us cannot be married in this community. We are scared. You have very few men in this community who have a healthy mindset, very kind, loving, you know, and innocent men, but not many. Because a lot of the women, they experience this, they are men doing this. That's why when they see a beautiful woman, they're seeking. Because their men are going to do it. They cannot trust their men. It's not that the woman, they don't trust the woman. They cannot trust their men. I know some of the women, they're idiotic themselves. They always go out with people, husbands. I hate it. Me, I'm a job. To fear, I despise people, husbands. Me, I never date someone's husband all these years. Never. But a lot of women love it. They're always dating people, husbands, and going crazy. Yes, they don't trust their men because a lot of the men are not good. How can you trust a snake? That's where they get this nightmare jealousy from. Where do in fairity, I don't know, complex come from? The bleaching is out of control. It comes from under the mango tree, especially from the men. The men. They make a lot of the women don't believe in themselves. They love light-skinned women and they don't hide it. Like I said, if you're doing your idiotic behavior, you don't put it out. But the men, they will sit under the mango tree and they will say, huh, this person is so light and beautiful. When someone walk past, even if the person is bleaching, they know this person was black like Amijo two days ago. They say, hey, this person is now beautiful and white. Look at how they're bleaching so white and beautiful. They're so white now, like Tubab. Tubab is a white person, you know. And when the person have natural light skin, that's even worse. You know, people like the fuller people and stuff. Ooh, they're like, ooh, my beautiful light skin woman. All your friends will be like, you're so lucky. You have a beautiful light skin wife, yeah. And they say this in front of the young black children, sitting, watching them, hearing them, playing. And listening, you're gonna make them understand that they're dark skin. You're gonna make them think they're ugly. So when they grow up, why are they not gonna bleach? Also, they're gonna see their mothers bleaching when they're young. They're watching their mothers bleaching the hell. Like what I was explaining. So they're gonna think they're, they're not beautiful. So they're gonna bleach. Unless if they're very confident and know that the mother is sick. If not, they're gonna do it. That's where they get it from. Because the community is traumatized, even the men, a lot of them are effing traumatized. That's why they love sex like a stupid idiot. Any man that loves sex like a good, he's traumatized as F. Because a lot of the men have been beaten when they're young. Especially when they, want to, when they go to Quran school. The Muslim community in Africa, when any man go to Quran school, or even school, government school, they are dead. Even private school, they beat you, but... Government school is worse. So, especially in Senegal, the ones that go to Dara and Gambia, my little brother go to Dara. The Dara is the Quran school. That's worse. The amount of beating they beat these people is worse than slave master, how they beat their children. Sorry, um, their people. So the child will be beating when they go to learn Quran. They will be beating when they go to learn English or French. They will be beating in the house too. Everywhere they go, they get beaten. And when I say beaten, I mean serious beaten. Extremely serious beaten until the child is seeking or peeing themselves in the middle of the beating. That's what I mean. I don't mean little beating there. In the school, they will make the child do monkey dance until the child, three days they cannot walk. They will put them down and beat them but they also ask them to do monkey dance. Monkey dance is like this, when the child has to do like this. They hold their ears like this. They exchange their hands like this to hold their ears and they have to go down like this, up. Deep squat, like a deep squat. You go down until your bottom is about to touch the ground and you go up again. 
very painful for the legs. And they ask the child to do like 100 or 200 or 150. For nothing, for just, I was explaining and you weren't listening. In. You don't even know how to spell apple. You're not here to learn, you're not listening. In. You're not focusing. This is what they're doing like this for. Oh, I was talking and then I told you nobody should talk and you're talking. How are you going to have a bunch of children and you say nobody, nobody should talk? And you yourself, you're answering phone call in the class. You're on WhatsApp, on TikTok in the class, you the teacher. If you're a man, you're talking to your girlfriends in the class. Even abusing some of the children in the class. Sexual abuse, I mean. Some of these teachers get the children pregnant or try to treat them. Not all of them, but some of them do. Checking them out, complimenting them, or even try to get them, you know, to be alone with them. They do. I have a cousin who the person that was teaching her about Allah. Get her pregnant. Her Quran teacher. You, you're allowed to do all of that. Chatting, anyone call you, you're talking, chatting in the phone. And the child talk to their, you know, person, talk to somebody when you ask them not to talk and you beat them. And they ask the child to not, they, they ask the whole class to not talk all day because they're rude and miserable and insane and effing traumatize themselves. Just like the mothers who beat their children and, and, and fathers. Because they hate their job too, because they're too stressed and just effing. And the job is not good money too, especially, you know, um, government teaching. Very small money too. And the class have too many people. So I know it's not easy. There's one teacher that is from Senegal, one lady. I salute her. She says she stopped beating the class children because of me. Do you know how happy I feel when she told me that? Because I talk like this on my TikTok live video all the time. Because of me, she come into the video and tell me that, Amy... I will never beat the children anymore. But it's not easy. It's too many children. She have like 70 children in the class. 70 plus. Children that are young. Five year old. Some even under. Five to ten. Something like that. But she says some even under. Mix, mix, mix age. And she said the children, they don't listen sometimes because they're too stressed. She can tell she said they're too stressed. I say, exactly, why are you beating them? Maybe they're beating them in the house and they sound every day. And you, you're beating them also. She says she can tell sometimes that this child, they're effing traumatized. Ain't they, son? This is sad, man. Maybe some of the children going through sexual abuse in the house. Or something. Or just child beating. They come to school, they cannot focus, Nathan, and you're beating them when they're not quiet. And most of them tell the children to quiet for like two, three hours. Just the whole time the children should not talk. They should just be like. The whole time. Who can do that? Why are they asking them to do that? Because they're wicked and miserable. And the government is wicked and miserable. That's why the government is not going to make enough school, you know, class. So they're going to make small amount of school class, you know, and then they're going to put the children in the class, one class with millions of children, like a sardine. And the teacher is so effing miserable and have this beating culture. And the children are so scared, Nathan, and just, oh, it's very sad. And they, they, they're going to tell them, shut up, don't talk. If anyone talk today, you know. Here's my stick. If anyone talk, you know. The whole day. That, that's not possible. So they're going to talk. And then the moment they talk, you're like, Asha, this person, come here. That person, come here. All of you stand there. Do 100 monkey dance. Do 200 monkey dance. Go and clean the whole school. Go and do this. Go and do that. Punishing them. Big punishment, guys, for just talking, saying something little. Hey, in this South Africa. So people traumatize the children in different areas in Africa, guys. Not just, you know, da-da-da. No. 
Everywhere you go, you get traumatized in Africa. They program you to not have peace. Under the mango tree, school, everywhere you go. This is what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, I know that many men go, many men throughout the world cheat. However, there are some of us men who cheat, who hate to cheat on our wives. Personally, I don't ever want to hurt my wife and I fear Allah. Awesome. Yeah, I know that throughout the world, you have idiot men everywhere. Those men on the mango trees are agents of oppression. They won't inspire confident. Yeah, they hate confident women. <laughs> they hate women like me in the community. They like, what the hell? I'm a joke. They like people like I'm a joke who cannot be married. And when you're married, you listen to them. They will, they will make you leave your marriage. Hmm. You'll be like them. They're going to make you leave your marriage. And you're going to end up like them. And they're lying. They know that you're not making, you know, they, you know them leave their marriage. I will come to you. I just need your address. Okay. I will need you, I will need to know how much I also, I can make sure I bring enough. Okay. They hate confident women. <laughs> they're, they're afraid of confident women because they know that when the women, when we are confident, we are going to like fight for our right and we're going to tell them that what they're doing is wrong. They don't want that. They hate it. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, they hate it so much. It's sad. I'm laughing, but I'm crying. It's very sad. They hate it so much. Some of them, they don't even allow their wives to watch me. <laughs> like, a lot of their wives, they, they love me because they know that what I'm talking about is true. <laughs> and that I love them. I care for them. That's why I'm talking like this. But they have to hide and watch me. When they watch me, one of them told me, she called me, she was laughing so much, she nearly cried. She said, Amy, because I was seeing this on TikTok not long ago, a few days ago. And she called me because she, she, she's one of my followers that who have my number. But husband don't know. Because if husband knows, he'll be dead. She said, Amy, how do you know this? That our husband, a lot of our husband don't want us to watch you. I said, I don't know. I just guess it. I know because I know our men don't like, you know, women like me. Sometimes they even see it inside my video. They will comment or come into the video telling me that women like you, you don't like to be married and you're going to make sure that no one else is married. <laughs> I said, you're lying. <laughs> I love being married and I'm going to marry again. I'm just going to not marry to an idiot. Anyway, she said to me, Amy. It's like you're talking to me and my friend because me and my friend, we love watching you, but all of our, none of our husbands want us to watch you. We always, when we watch you, we have to delete the, you know, the, 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 the evidence that we watch you. We have to hide it. If they see that we were watching you, we are in trouble. <laughs> and I say, oh my God, I told you. They hate confident women. They always tell me that in my videos on TikTok and stuff. They always be like, you have a Western mindset. Amy, what you want is not, you know, you cannot have what you want in our community. The type of love you want doesn't exist in our community. Now, that's embarrassing, man. I just want a normal, honest love. No game, no cheating, normal man. And they, and they tell me in my videos, you cannot have that in my community, in our community. You have to go and find that with the white people or somebody else. We don't have this. You want a man who can only be with you alone and just like care for you so much. They call that care for you so much when you have a husband who is there for you. Hell, this is sad. A lot of the women is like they're not married, guys. That's why they all have a lot of friends that they're calling, gossiping 24 hours, going to parties together because their husbands are not for them. They don't talk to them. 
they don't even sex them correctly. They don't do nothing with them, absolutely nothing. It's just like they have a neighbor in the house or just like I'm with you because of whatever. Nightmare, man. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go. But yeah, this community is like this, but... <laughs> This community has a lot of good things. It's just that the things that are not good are covering all the good things, you know. That's why I like to focus on them. But it's not like the community don't have good things like kind, loving um, men or kind, loving homes who don't beat children or opposite of what I talked about here. The community do have that. So don't forget that. The community have all the opposite of, of what I talked about here. It's just I like to focus on the rotten stuff that is bothering us, you know. And we have quite a lot of that too. But remember, the community have other areas that don't have these things that I talked about. So do not forget that. Don't give up on the community. Keep on loving the community no matter what. And keep doing the right thing. People shall follow you hopefully, especially the youths. Know that you are amazing, you are beautiful, you are enough. You are capable of changing whatever you want to change towards you. And when you change stuff towards you, you change the whole community. You cannot influence people that you're not even going to know you influence them. So, thank you for watching this video, guys. Finally going to end this video now, guys. See you guys again. Hopefully, I'll be coming next Thursday. I want to be coming here every Thursday evening for us to have this kind of chat, guys, okay? And you can always send me questions and stuff if you want. But you can always contact me as well. My email address above. And I'll put it on the comment section of this video once it, fun it finished loading for people that are going to watch the replay. If you want to learn Wolof, you can contact me. I teach people how to um, speak Wolof on Zoom call. If you want to talk to me, you know, because you're going through some stress or something or you just don't know what to do, contact me. My email address is above and I'll put it below. And yeah, thank you so much. I'm going to see you guys again, inshallah. Stay peaceful. Do the right thing. Be honest. Be kind and loving to yourself and to others. And I'm going to see you guys next time, inshallah. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.